Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. Switch off is the message from Federated Farmers to the New Zealand public over the emissions trading scheme provisions which came into force this week. And it seems the Australian public has well and truly switched off from their former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd after he abandoned that country's plans to cut greenhouse gases. On this side of the ditch, exporters argue that not one dollar more in income will be earned because of the ETS. But academics say benefits can be built into New Zealand brands. What do farmers really, really think? Are they behind the Federation or happy to play their part along with the rest of New Zealanders? Today my guests are National Business Review editor Neville Gibson and freelance journalist Keith Stewart. Now, Neville, uh, we've seen an awful lot of protests from the Federation about uh, the ETS. Uh, haven't they uh, won enough concessions? Well, my message to them is to get over it rather mm. than switch off, because while I personally think uh, an ETS is a bit of a crazy way to go, it is happening around the world that we have to reduce greenhouse gases. And this gives an opportunity for farmers, as well as everybody else, who are being taxed for using fossil fuels and that sort of thing, to reduce it or think about how they can... Uh, pay less. We've all got to play our part, don't we, Keith? Uh, the general public are going to have uh, increased costs in terms of uh, fuel prices and uh, electricity. Uh, farmers are just part of that, aren't they? Absolutely. I can't see any way around not having to pay a share. Whether ETS is a, is a good idea or not, I'd have to debate. But it's what we've decided on as a mm. country. It seems that most of the country agree with it. Mm -hmm. And there is a general feeling that the, 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 the politicians are doing the right job here. Mm -hmm. And every time Federated Farmers talk about it, they sound like whingers again. Mm -hmm. So Neville, do you think there's a risk that um, the Federation can be turning off uh, more people with its switch off campaign well, it's... than it's actually converting? Well, certainly there the are real cases in agricultural emissions because there's no research that shows that this can be controlled at the moment, but work is going on. And that's really where New Zealand can make an impact. And uh, I, I don't think the government's going to impose the emission uh, Control, uh, taxes on the agricultural se sector, it's going to be put out until it c can actually be achieved. Because we are actually talking about two further reviews, aren't we, uh, before the agricultural provisions would come in, in uh, 2013 or even 2015. Dead right. The mm. only taxes that are going to stay in are the ones on fossil fuels because we can measure them and people can switch to other forms of energy f to uh, alleviate it. But there's a problem in there. We're talking about fossil fuels. Urea is a fossil fuel. Yes. But that's not being taxed in this. So the farmers are getting a head start on everybody else. If mm -hmm. I used as much um, fossil fuel as a, as a normal farmer does mm -hmm. that puts urea on their pasture, I would be caned for it under mm -hmm. the new system. They're getting away with it for at least another three or four more years. Mm -hmm. And I just think... So many concessions have been made to farmers. Federated farmers are really starting to look like dorks in this. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's the uh, solution here, Neville, uh, in terms of uh, the Federation perhaps just um, uh, quietening down for a while, being happy with the wins they've made, uh, not going out there and uh, causing further uh, unrest or uh, problems, as Keith's saying? Well, you said in, in the intro that there's going to be a drop in export income and markets are related to ETS, that sort of thing. Really, the, the main problem for farmers is to increase the revenue they get from their exports. Mm. And the, we know there's a world food shortage mm. and that uh, premium uh, food will cost more to consumers and we've got to think of smart ways to get more of that money back to the farmers. And there are some people doing that already, aren't there, Keith? Oh, there, there is plenty of evidence out there that we could, we could earn a lot more money from our farm products, mm. um, but we've never tried to. We've, mm. we've, we're quite happy being commodity traders. We love sticking it on, in, on, on ships to the other side of the world in vast quantities and getting the lowest possible price for it. That's mm. the way we operate as a country. Mm. The idea that we can maximise the natural products that we have has never been accepted by any of our producer boards, mm. any of our people selling on behalf of farmers. The crisis in the meat industry is a classic case. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that has come about because we insisted on continuing to sell a commodity to a world that was trading up. Mm -hmm. So everybody else stole it mm -hmm. from us. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have the most r respectable lamb in the world. We mm. should have, but we don't. Mm. That's mm. French or Welsh or Irish. Mm. Um, we don't have the most respectable beef in the world. We're happy flogging carcasses off to the Burger Kings mm. in the United States. So what's going to change that mindset if it's not going to be the dollar and cent return uh, that, as Neville says, um, 
producers would be able to earn with these better added value products. Well, I, I saw a, a comment the other day by, by a, um, a, a farm advisor, Pete Floyd. He's mm. been around for a while. Pete's That's even right, older yes. than me. Pete saying it's about time farmers thought about farming for profit. Mm. Mm. Which is Do quite, you not think they're doing that at the moment? No, of course they're not. They're farming for whatever goes through the farm gate. What do you think, no, Neville? Well, those reports produced are PricewaterhouseCoopers being the, uh, the main one. Mm. Uh, certainly, uh, farming for profit is a bit of a new idea. Even the field days picked up on that. They said innovation for profit. But mm -hmm. profit's the name of the game. The mm -hmm. supermarket guru from America spoke to a lot of people in the food industry mm -hmm. and he said New Zealand is at the top of the world when it comes to uh, US consumers when they think of a country they want to buy their food from. Mm -hmm. And we're not exploiting that. Yeah. So doesn't the ETS scheme help producers who are looking to secure those higher niche uh, added value markets, Keith? Just no. one more tool that uh, we've got in the toolbox? No. No, I, would, I wouldn't start promoting New Zealand as a green place. We've been doing it for too long mm. and we're exposed. I mean, at the moment, the biggest shipping company in the world will not ship our our fish mm. because we're ripping the bottom off the ocean. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to be very careful calling ourselves pure and green and all that sort of thing unless we actually do something about it. And the problem that farmers have, the way I see it, especially through their representatives, federated farmers, is they don't buy into the idea that you can get a higher return on your product. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's look, the classic case is pork. Yes. You think about the pork situation. Um, when Mike King did mm. his expose last year, mm -hmm. everybody was whinging about what a horrible person he was. Mm. Except for the consumers, he mm. said, just a minute, we don't like this, sales of New Zealand pork went down. Mm. Except for a couple of producers, Freedom Farms for example, mm. Harmony, who had already set up a system whereby they could see there was a market in New Zealand mm. for high quality pork. Mm that they would get a, make a profit, they do it for a profit, they're not doing it mm. just to make people happy, mm -hmm. they are making a killing at mm. the moment. Mm. So that could be repeated elsewhere, Neville, in terms of other producers um, following that sort of philosophy that Keith's Well, certainly about. Europeans are used to paying a high price for the food and they've had the greatest uh, agricultural intensification type policies there and we certainly know how to do it. We can improve our production output mm. and also look good uh, and on the green scale. Mm. The so, ETS is just part of it because there are other, yeah. other so, ways of uh, selling New Zealand too. So what's the link that's missing? What, what do we need to put it all together and um, actually bring well, it off? Well, I think there's a lot of good strategies by certain companies and they're not all small niche ones either. Mm. And, uh, and also you've got to educate the local consumers. They were already traded up to quite an extent even during the recession. Mm. But a lot of what you're talking about, Keith, it comes back to individual producers getting the bit between their teeth and really going for it, doesn't it? Well, I think there, there are two sides to it. Mm. One is that our big producers mm. don't give a toss about New Zealand. They're not interested in the New Zealand market. The biggest market in the world for dairy mm. is New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Just go through the advertising schedule sometimes and find who the biggest advertisers are. I bet none of them are dairy companies. Mm. Mm. They treat the New Zealand consumer like crap. Mm. And honestly, honestly, if the Danes could suddenly get their butter in here, half of New Zealanders would go and buy Danish butter just to say, eh, yes. to the dairy farmers. Mm. That's the situation at the moment. Mm. The farming industry has successfully pissed off their biggest single market, which is New Zealand. Mm. You mm. talked to, I, I, I had a conversation with somebody from the pork board the other day, mm. and he, I, I was writing the story, and he said, what's the feedback you've got? And mm. I said, um, well, this is from one chef. Mm. I can't trust New Zealand pork. Mm. It's inconsistent, it's unreliable. You never know what you're going to get out of it. Mm. I cannot, running seven restaurants, I cannot give New Zealand pork to my kitchen mm. unless I've checked every single piece that comes in. Mm. You know what his response was? Mm. Tell him to go and learn how to cook pork. <laughs> you know the person I was talking to? Mm. Simon Gold, chief mm. judge of MasterChef. Yeah. That's yeah, the sort of comment that, that you get. Response, Instead yeah. of him saying, well, gosh, let, can I talk to him and let's sort it out, was he should learn how to cook pork. Mm. Oh. Mm. That, that's uh, uh, not a good attitude, is it, Neville, in terms of that uh, confrontational level when we should all be well, working together as New Zealanders. Well, from the other end, the food industry and the big companies are under huge pressure on health issues, traceability, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So they really got to go out and talk to the farmers. But if the farmers aren't talking to the big companies who, who are control the industry, mm. they're not going to increase their margins because those companies now 